Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning to all the online students. Thank you for joining in. Uh, a warm welcome to all our e-learning students as well. Uh, that each of you are doing well. Yes, good morning to each of you. All right, so the last couple of weeks, shall we start with a word of prayer? Right? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning once again. Thank you for bringing us, Lord, to another time of study. Lord, as we look deeper into your word, Lord, we pray that uh, you will open our hearts, bring about the change that each of us need, Lord, in our relationships, in our connections with you. Father, Lord, uh, even as we uh, look into an important chapter, May this, uh, may, may, may what we're going to learn today really bring about a change and a renewal of our thinking, of our uh, personality, of the way that we behave. Thank you once again. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. All right. So the last couple of weeks, what have we, we been focusing on? Okay, so yes, last week we did understanding roles of the husband and wife, right? Okay, today we're going to uh, go into um, a different kind of a chapter. And this is just not uh, in view with marriage. Okay, this can be applied to each one of us, whether we're married or not. It's about uh, uh, understanding how we think, how we act how we reason and how we behave, OK? And uh, yes, it, it applies a lot in marriage as well. But nevertheless, it can, it works in any kind of a relationship that uh, we may have. So uh, when we are interacting with other people, what about us are we, uh, what about us do we use to interact with others? Or when someone else is interacting with us, what do we notice about the other person that makes that interaction good or bad? Or So what is it about us that we, we observe when we interact? Huh? Our words? OK, so what, hap what is behind the words? Yes, your thoughts. What else? Huh? OK, our behaviors. Sorry, intention, you said? Uh, intentions, OK. Anything else? Huh? Attitudes, OK. So we're going to be looking at very uh, three important aspects, which is attitude, temperament, and behavior today. So whenever you interact with a person, it's just not the body that you're interacting with, right? There is something deep within that you're actually engaging with. So even when you're marrying, you're just not marrying a body, right? You're marrying uh, a lot of different aspects of, of the person also, right? And you get to understand that as you interact, as you have those conversations. So this, these three things, attitudes, our temperament and behavior really play a very important role in how fulfilling a relationship can be. Okay, and that's important for us to understand. So, when you're getting married to someone or when you're in a friendship with somebody, the person can be very good looking, they can have very good appearance, but maybe their attitudes aren't too great, or you may not really like their behavior. Or they may be in very high paying jobs or have very good skills. But the way that they respond or something that they've come across is not very appealing. So that's something that we need to understand. OK, so let's look at these three words first. We'll try and understand these three words. And then we'll get into um, uh, the details of it. So what do we mean by the word attitude? Can you give me an example of the word attitude? How we are responding? OK. Can you give me an example? Yes, Rupus. Example, give. Or anything. Tell me what you were going to say. Uh, 
what you talk okay all right give me an example of what an attitude would be like how we are behaving give me an example an example ah they ignore you okay good all right okay so um it is a way that they may be perceiving that question or perceiving you okay someone said pride and superiority okay so the, uh, the word attitude doesn't you know let's not mistake it with this thing some people say no they have such an attitude right that shows i think that's what deepu is probably saying that pride and superiority we're not talking about that attitude we not that that uh, reference of an attitude the attitude we're talking about is the way that we are perceiving or seeing something like for example uh, if i were to tell you um uh, especially in india right when when south indians talk about north indians they think about them in a certain way right isn't it or when north indians think about south indians they think about them in a certain way is that right yeah so that that's what i mean by the attitude or let's say you're talking about a certain uh, set of people uh, like let's suppose uh, there are different um, professions when you're talking about doctors what is the attitude you have about them it may be different okay all of us may have different but what would it be okay so some may have respect what else would some people have some may say like okay maybe this is a better example when you say policeman a uh, fear what are the other attitudes secure some may feel corrupt right so we the way that we think or perceive about something is what we call as an attitude right and generally where does our attitude come from maybe from our own experiences from the way that we have experienced maybe a policeman before you probably got caught and then he to, he took off 2000 rupees when it actually had just 500 rupees so or when you say auto drivers right they are reckless or maybe you have good experience with auto drivers so your attitude is the way that you perceive or you think about something is that clear everyone is clear what attitude is okay what is temperament okay what's temperament what do you mean by temperament sorry short tempered okay uh okay uh, the meaning of temperament is okay it is your general inclination or your general nature right you have a certain nature yeah short being short tempered is one part of that okay but that's not the only thing but it is your inclination or your general nature like um, any i'm try, trying to think of an example um sorry okay okay when driving somebody hits the car okay how would we all respond how would you respond don't look at general how would you respond you may shout and scream then uh, some may just let go i uh, compromise and let go right so how you your general nature of responding to things like for example let's say you're faced with stress you don't sleep in the night okay some people will be very irritable right some people will be very quiet right some people may just withdraw so your general nature how do you how how do you respond to different life situations and life experiences is what temperament is okay like uh, you're having a get together some people will be in the middle of the of it no they'll be jumping and laughing and howling and in the middle of that party but there will be some who will be quiet at the corner so it is your natural inclination clear yes i hope online students i hope that's clear 
The next one is behavior. What's behavior? Behavior. Yeah, behavior is how you act. Your actions uh, really show what your behavior is. So there are these three important things of our attitude. What is our attitude? The way we are, the way we think or we perceive about different things. Our temperament is our natural inclination towards things and our behavior is the way that we act. Okay? All right. Did someone have a question among the online students? No. All right. So, so can you imagine when two people with, uh, at with different attitudes and temperament and behavior come together, what would happen? There can be conflicts. Sorry? There can be differences, right? So when we are dealing with somebody, we first of all need to understand how we behave, how we act, how we respond. And at the same time, we need to understand how the other person uh, acts, behaves, or thinks. It's just not enough, like in a marriage especially, it's just not enough to know how you think and you act and you behave. It is important to understand your spouse as well. Right? Why is it that they're saying the thing they're saying? Why are they behaving like that? Why are they acting like that? It's important to understand. And that's what we are going to be looking at. So... Very often, what are we faced with? There are some negative attitudes that we may have. Right? Let me give you very common examples. Maybe in a marriage, uh, not that I'm biased to the men, okay? I'm just giving you a very common example. The men come with an attitude of, I don't have to do any housework. Right? Maybe all of you boys are don't have that okay i'm just saying general okay all uh, as a as a man i don't have to do any housework it's all my wife's responsibility what will happen it is going to cause a concern there right okay or generally now women i'm not there's only diksha here and maybe some women here I, i'm just telling you what gen now the women come with an attitude of Whatever happens, you know, my husband should not listen to his mother. Right? So that's the attitude. Maybe sometimes you come with. And so what happens? There are going to be clashes. Is that right? Yeah? So negative attitudes will influence the way our marriage goes. Right? And so that's, that is, that's why it is very important to uh, address some of those attitudes address our uh, personalities and address our behavior all right okay so are we all here together yes okay so what we're going to do is learning how to first of all understand our own attitudes our temperament our behaviors and how we can understand that of our spouse so let's look at attitudes what kind of attitudes should we as believers have we as believers should have Christ-like attitude. Grow up in the likeness of who Christ was. So when he walked the earth, he demonstrated many things in the way he demonstrated how to act, how to think, how to behave. Yes? And, and, and scripture is full of, us, uh, of showing us what kind of an attitude does God desire of us? So the challenge for us is to walk like Christ walked. 1 John 2, 6. So this means it, um, it even affects things of our marriage. So we are called to have the mind of Christ. Each of us are called to have the mind of Christ. So we come to the place of being like Christ, having the mind of Christ. So let's look at, there's a lot of scripture that we can look back to. And so maybe we'll just read a couple to find out some of the attitudes that, that you know, it is important for us to begin to imbibe. Uh, let's read Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 
five. Let's read that, and then we'll maybe take one more uh, verse. Philippians chapter two, verse three to eight, five or eight. Don't do any, anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, but be open toward one another. Always considering others better than yourself, and look out for one another's interests, not just for me. The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus has. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the part of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. Okay, so when you look at this, these verses, let's look at verse 3. What does it say? No selfish ambition. That is to be selfless. Right? How does that play out? Maybe you're all sitting here. There is a nice big cake over here. One piece is bigger than all the others. And you're really hungry. So the desire is to let me get that big piece, right? But what does it say here? Selflessness, not looking after your own self or your own interest, but that of the interest of the other. Now look at these things in marriage. I mean these things in marriage also. There'll be two pieces of cake, one big, one small. Or that, I and mean, this happens in every home. You know, in the chicken curry, there is that leg piece and there is the neck piece. <laughs> so who gets the neck and who gets the leg? <laughs> right? So isn't does that reflect our attitude? It does, no? I need to get it. I'm hungry. I mean, why can't I eat? I was working the whole day. Uh, you know, he was sitting around doing nothing. I should eat it. So it actually reflects our attitude. These are simple things, but they actually reflect our attitudes. Yes? Okay, let's look at another one. It says in verse 3 itself, be humble towards one another, always considering others better than yourselves. Be humble and consider others better than yourself. So you and your wife or your husband and you have had an argument. Why should I say sorry? Let him come first. He's the one who made the mistake, no? So what, is, what does it say in scripture here? Be humble. So what does that mean? Say sorry first, right? Or uh, consider others better than yourselves. No, I know all of this. You know nothing. You keep quiet. So these are our attitudes that we bear. All right. Uh, verse 4, look out for one another's interests, not just as your own, not just for your own. Verse 7, he took the nature of a servant. Right? So these are all Christ-like attitudes that you and I are called to have. And, and not just in any relationship, but especially in marriage. Okay, let's look at... Um, hmm. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. Can somebody read that? Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 8. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. So, show a gentle attitude towards everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayer, ask God for what you need. Always asking Him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep our hearts and minds safe in union with the Christ Jesus. In conclusion, in my, conclusion, my friend, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true. Noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Okay, so there are many things over here. It says to rejoice, to have a gentle attitude, to not worry, to enjoy the peace of God, to fill your mind with good things. Right? So all of this, what does it suggest? That we are called to have 
good attitudes. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the rest of that those scriptures. You can you can take some time to do that. Now, uh, if you look at the 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 second paragraph there, it talks about the opposite of some of these positive attitudes, which we have you know a few of the verses we've read here. There are a whole list of negative attitudes. Did you find it? It says the opposite of these positive Christ-like attitudes are what we will call negative attitudes. And there's a big list. Can you quickly go through that list and circle all of that that we operate from? You don't have to read it. You take some time, take two minutes, quickly go through the list and see which of those negative attitudes you operate from. Sorry? Intolerance. Some, something that you cannot stand. You cannot tolerate something. You don't like it, so you're not able to stand it. I think it's in a table form for you all, no? Yeah, OK. Mm. OK, how many of us do not have any negative attitude? Nobody? Are uh, you? OK. Indifference. Indifference is when you, um, when something doesn't really bother you. When when something that that should should take up an importance for you, it doesn't bother you. Like, give you an example. Maybe someone is uh, emotionally going through a rough time, and it doesn't. You're indifferent. It doesn't matter to you whether they. Okay, so you, I'm sure there are many, many of that that we really need to work on, isn't it? Okay, so what are the effects of these attitudes? What happens when we come with negative attitudes? Does it affect us in what, how we, uh, how we see things? Yes, it affects us in how we do things. It affects us in what we say. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you, you're always negative. And someone, your wife or your husband, makes a dish, makes something new. And uh, if you're negative, what will happen? Huh? You will say, Okay, you could it could have been better, right? Or you may you may say, ah, I think my mother makes better than yours, right? When you come with that attitude of negativity, it is going to affect your experience, isn't it? You are not going to enjoy the meal, neither is your spouse going to be happy. So it will it will affect everything that you see, that you do, everything that you that you say. Right? Or let's say when you go for a new job, you feel, uh, you don't feel confident. Right? So what's going to happen? How are people going to see you? They will see you as underconfident, right? 
or you will you may not have the uh, energy to do something well so it it all matters on your attitudes so your attitudes also influences how you expect something suppose you walk into uh, um, a job saying nothing's going to happen or you walk into class and say today is going to be very boring are you going to expect anything different no, someone has to stand on their head to entertain you right so that attitude will affect your expectation it will affect your experience if you come to a class saying it's going to be so boring you're going to be sleeping right but if you come to a class and say what am i going to learn today you know maybe there's something new that's going to happen you're actually really looking forward to understanding something and it also uh, will affect the way that you leave the place let's suppose you're going for a vacation okay with your family and so you're saying what family vacation so much of money we're spending how much of time what are you going to do through the car journey you're going to complain always complain 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 and whose life are you making miserable and and others right you're making your life as well as the others miserable and by the time you come back from the vacation will anyone want to ever go for a vacation anymore you would have traumatized everyone so much that they would never want to go for a vacation right so your negative attitude can affect your experience of things as well as how you leave it so is attitude something that you have a choice do you have a choice to respond differently yes okay so in the in in the vacation example how 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 do you make a choice joyful how will you do it <laughs> okay you have a choice to go or not so if you're planning to make everyone's life miserable best is not to go or you tell yourself i am going to start looking at the more positive things right so actually the attitude is a choice you can change the way that you see things right even uh, for example let's say money you may have a little bit of money the way that you approach or you see that money will affect the way that you you deal with it also if you always think that you have a lack you're always going to feel a lack but if you're going to be thankful and joyful and grateful saying oh i have this much you will begin to enjoy a lot more of life as a result of your attitude is that right okay so attitude is um, is also a choice and attitude is something that can be changed so we also need to remember that attitude can, is also learned you look back at your own homes and think of maybe someone in your home who has a negative attitude you probably also think that that's okay like let's say someone in the home always worries okay maybe a parent or somebody is a worrier constant worrier and that's what you've seen growing up and that becomes you also tend to become a worrier so that's also learnt right and you do have a choice of unlearning that okay so that's what we're talking about about uh, having christ like attitude and we will we will go into how we can we can change that okay so the 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 truth is that when we recognize there are some attitudes that are not helpful for us is not christ like and when we open ourselves to god he is there to help work that with you he will walk with you he will do his work to change those those attitudes he will help you deal with some of those root causes that's there so that you can have a, a better attitude okay who is there to help us in this the power of the holy spirit is there to transform 
the inner man. He transforms the inner man. When we do pray, when we ask, he will continue to do his will in us. Okay? All right. Let's look at the next one, which is the spirit-controlled temperament. Okay? So there are, like we said, it's our natural inclination. Um, how we express our personalities. So you may know it as, let's say, you know, someone is an extrovert, someone's an introvert, someone is an ambivert, you may know it as somewhere. So there are different kinds of personality types that are there. We, we won't get, uh, you know, get too much into those details. But how we conduct ourselves is again a matter of choice, right? Like, for example, you're in a, in, sitting in class. Maybe by nature you're a quiet person. But does it always have to remain like that? Or maybe by nature you're the one who talks the law the most. Whenever the teacher asks, you're the only one talking. No offense to anybody here. Huh? I'm, I'm just giving you an example. But do you have a choice? You have a choice, right? To say, OK, let me allow the other one to talk. So that, that, again, is a personality that we need to be mindful of. So um, uh, when we're looking at ourselves as believers, what are we called? Who, sh who should influence our personality? Who should influence our personality? Yes. It says, in scripture, it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? So we are influenced by the Holy Spirit so much so that we express who He is. We express the character of the Holy Spirit. And how do we do that? We do that when we yield. What does yielding mean? Sorry? Yield, yield. It's to submit is to give ourselves to it and say, Holy Spirit, help me respond in a way that is, that, that is good. So when we yield to him, it's his nature, his character, his strength is expressed through us. OK? All right? So remember that uh, when, if this cup had coffee in it, the more that you shake it, what will come out? Coffee only will come out. No, water won't come out, right? So similarly, if we shake you up, what what should what comes out? It, what is inside only will come out, right? Right? And how do when is the shaking happening? When does shaking happen? When in situations of stress is when we really know whether the spirit is within us or whether Jean George is within me, not within you, is your own name, right? But it really shows. It is in that moment of real shaking that only what you are filled in will come out. Right? An apple tree will only bear apple. It will not bear gooseberries or vice versa, right? So, but and and that's what we 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 are called to do, to fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit, to be influenced by the Holy Spirit to yield to him so that we bear fruit. What kind of fruit? Galatians 5, 22 to 23, which is? Love, peace, and joy. Love, joy, peace, patience, Love. kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. So when you're shaken, if you're filled with the Spirit, what will come out? Yes, the nine fruit of the Spirit will come out. If that's not there, when we're shaken, what will come out? Huh? Ourselves. Asapu will come out. Okay. All right? So when we are Spirit-controlled, the fruit of the Spirit will naturally evolve. Okay? So if the Spirit is there, what's there within us? Freedom. 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there there is liberty. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is the one who brings about that righteousness, the joy, and that peace. Okay, sorry, I think I missed a few 
questions here. I'm just going to take some time to take questions. OK, Diksha, you asked a question, which we looked at in the previous session. I will talk to you in person, OK? Um, what is condescending and cynical? Uh, Lucy, condescending means to look down on somebody, OK, as if they were nothing. You know, when you talk down on something, that's what condescending is. Cynical is when um, you treat everything with 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 scrutiny. That is, um, you're always looking at the negative part of things. You're always looking at that which is you're looking at things with suspicion. That's what cynical is. Okay. All right. Okay. Next, we go to the behavior. So. How do we judge our behavior? How do we judge our behavior? Huh? Through our actions? OK. So today morning, when you uh, before you came to go to the come here, let's say someone sat in the bathroom for a long time, you wanted to go. How did you respond? You kick the door. <laughs> OK. You kick the door. Huh? You called out, or you must have written one message over WhatsApp, you know, that was not very pleasant and kind. Yeah? Correct? So our behaviors definitely again, express what we are full of. So what should our standard of our behavior be? What, is, what should be the standard? Where do we get the standard of our behavior? By the word of God, yes. So whatever, however we behave, we should be governed by what the word says. Because if we love God, we will obey his commandments, right? So as a result, we will also behave in a way that shows love, that shows kindness, that shows patience. So how are we to conduct ourselves? Let's read Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Colossians 3, 12 to 15. You are Can I read, sister? God, he loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and for, forgiven one, one another. Whenever any of you has complained against someone else, you must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven us. And to all those all those these qualities added love which binds all things together in perfect unity the peace that christ gives is to guide in you in the decisions you make for it is to this peace that god has called to you together in the one body and be thankful okay so how are we to clothe ourselves what does it say compassion Good morning, everybody. Kindness. OK, how are we to clothe ourselves? Humility, gentleness, patience, tolerance, forgiveness, yes, thankfulness. So there are so many things that we are called to clothe ourselves with. OK? OK. How? Can you be kind to somebody today? Give them a nice hug, OK? Sorry? Compliment them, OK? Vimal? Do something for them. OK, how will you be gentle? How will you be patient with somebody, all the hostile boys? Asapu, how will you be patient with Blessy? Mm -hmm. 
Both are like ice cubes, yeah? Okay, they're patient. Is it? <laughs> okay, how can you be thankful today? Diksha. I'm just waking everybody up, okay? Okay, you can appreciate somebody today. All right, so is this again a choice? Yes. It's an obedience, it's a choice that we, we live this way, right? So sometimes it's easy to do things when they are nice to us. What about when they aren't nice? What does scripture say? Do not repay evil for evil, but... Pay them back with a blessing. That's what it says. So today when someone cuts you on the road, instead of you know, cursing them, you say, hey, brother, I bless you. Right? So that's, that's what we are called to do. Right? But now again, look at all of this in the light of marriage. She promised to iron your shirt, but she didn't, and the current went. What you'll do? Yes, Asapu, what do you say? You have to accept the situation, Asapu. Okay. So, what will you tell your wife? Huh? What? Okay, no worries. <laughs> okay. Right? So, it's a choice. All of this that we looked at today is a choice of how we are willing to behave in the way that the Word asks us to do. And we can bring about a hundred examples and yet we look back onto the Word and say, okay, this is what is expected of me. All right? Okay, so what kind of attitudes are we to have? Christ-like attitudes. Okay, what kind of a temperament? We need to be yielded to that of the Holy Spirit. And the behavior should be of the Word. Okay? So Christ-like attitude, Spirit-controlled temperament, and the Word-governed behavior. Okay, so there may be times that... Uh, and there are going to be uh, situations where, where we are not over here. We really don't have any of this. So how do we come to a place of uh, that, that, that place of transformation, that place of change? How can our attitudes become more Christ-like? How can our temperament be more yielded to that of the Holy Spirit? How could our behavior be more aligned to God's Word? Okay, We all need to begin somewhere. And the best place to begin is to repent. That's the first place, to know that we have sinned, we have, we, have, we have fallen short of God's glory, recognize that uh, we have been wrong, acknowledge it, and be willing to step forward into a place of transformation and heal healing. Okay? So how do we do that? We're going to be looking at four uh, truths which we should uh, Four truths that we can engage in in order for us to reach that transformation. Out of these four truths, the first two, which is the power of the cross and your identity in Christ, is already done for you. It's already done. It's established. It's completed. There's nothing more you have to do. You only have to believe and live by it. The second two, which is the renewing of, of your mind and walking in the Spirit are things that are ongoing, that you need to do on a regular, daily basis. The first two is the power of the cross and your identity in Christ. It's in your book. It's a completed work. It's not something that has to be done. It's already done for you. Right? It's in its 
It's already established for you. You only have to believe it and live by it. The other two, which is the renewing of your mind, as well as being walking in the prompting of the Spirit, is something that is ongoing, that you continue doing on a regular basis. OK? All right. We will go through the four in the next hour. Is there any question before we close? We have, we have around three minutes. Any question? It's an ongoing thing. Yeah, we, we will look into that. We will look into that. Yeah, the, the second two are things that are ongoing. It's, a, it's that progressive sanctification, things that we are progressively doing to keep ourselves uh, holy in our attitudes, in our behavior, in our temperament. Yes. Any questions? Cool cucumbers. No questions. Uh, online students, our audio is not working. Oh, really? Can one of you speak? Lucy, can you speak? Praise the Lord, sister. Oh, yes, I can't hear. The speaker. Yeah, Lucy, can you speak now? Yes, yes, sister. Hello. Oh, it's not on. I okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. The, yes. the the plug was switched off. Yes, Lucy, go ahead. No, sister. Get to sister was uh, trying to speak out during the session. It was not. So I just a uh, message. One minute, Lucy. Yeah, Lucy, please go ahead. No, sister, no questions as such. Our sister Getur uh, was uh, was trying to speak out, so I just uh, message. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Gertrude, do you have anything to say? Sister, I was uh, trying to read the Bible verse. Plus, I was uh, saying a few things, but I realized you couldn't hear. I'm so sorry. No, it's OK, sister. We'll try and fix this uh, in the break. Yeah. OK. All OK, right. thank, thank you, you, sister. All right, we'll break for a, a class, uh, for, a, for a break, and we'll come back in one hour. Uh, sorry, in 10 minutes. <laughs> sorry, we come back at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Check.